Hi, Ray Smith here. I'd like to talk with you a little bit about how to help your students with theory. We've talked a bit about, in other videos, we've talked a bit about right brain versus left brain uh, learning. Uh, when we're improvisers, we've got to be able to function with the right brain and the left brain. The right brain is, of course, the more intuitive part of ourselves. The left brain, we've got to school, and that means we've got to get into the math part of music. We've got to deal with theory. How do we teach theory? Well, all of jazz theory is based on knowing your major scales. And so I've start, I would start with having the student learn all their major scales. Uh, I, I found that students really don't learn their scales until they take on all 12 scales simultaneously. And then it starts to come together. The comparisons and contrasts are starting to make sense and we get some clarity. <clears throat> uh, it's another critical part of uh, jazz, f at the foundation of jazz theory would be that I've got to learn the circle we call it the cycle of dominance. Uh, this is not the cycle of, circle of fifths. Uh, the circle of fifths is well and good for Pythagoras, uh, thinking of it mathematically, and what a wonderful discovery that you keep going up by fifths and you make a circle, but it has no practical value in music making. Uh, the circle of fifths is chord regression. Music doesn't do that. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't go that direction. Music goes the other direction. Uh, if you go the circle of fourths, which is the opposite way around the circle, this is called chord progression. Uh, in jazz, we call it the cycle of dominance because C at the top of the circle is the, is the uh, dominant of F. F is the dominant of B flat. B flat is the dominant of E flat. E flat is the dominant of A flat. It's the strongest chord progression in all of music. So it makes a lot of sense to learn our scales to that direction as opposed to what usually uh, I've seen people uh, learning their scales in the circle of fifths direction. <clears throat> so the major scales, uh, we've got to deal with that first. Once we've got that, then we've got the foundation for being able to deal with the other types of scales that we use in jazz. Now I'm going to start with just the basic red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, major, minor, and dominant. <clears throat> so when we learn the chords, and when we learn the scales, the best way to do this is what I would call, uh, well, I don't just call it that, it's, it's called uh, parallel thinking. Now, relative thinking is when I say this piece of material is related to that piece of material by some interval of relationship. So we talk about this, of course, uh, our relative minor scales. So if you're F major, your relative minor scale is on the sixth mode, which is your D, D minor related then to F major. Well, in a similar way, G Dorian, which is your second mode, is related to F major. Uh, a Phrygian, the third mode, is related to F major. How are they related? They, they all use the same key signature. Uh, so this is relative thinking when I say, well, okay, how do you get a Locrian scale? You go up a half step to find your, because it's the seventh mode, if I go up a half step, I'll find out what eight is, and then I know what my key signature is. And so the Locrian mode is related to the major scale up a half step. Uh, there's the interval of relationship. Uh, this is actually gonna be useful in a lot of cases, but the primary colors here are going to be best learned, I believe, uh, thinking parallel instead of relative. Now, what's parallel? We take parallel pitches, all the pitches on C, so we build an alphabet on C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then we say, okay, if it's C major, it has those notes that I just listed, and if it's C minor, or C, let's call it Dorian minor, if we use the C Dorian minor, then it's just flat the third flat the seven by comparison. So now it's C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C. If I'm learning the chord, that's what I have to do. A C major chord would be C, E, G, B, D. The C minor chord would be C, E flat, G, B flat, D. In other words, one flat three, five, flat seven, nine. The major chord, one, three, seven, nine. By the way, I always go to the ninth chord level on all these things. One, three, seven, nine. Uh, three, one, three, five, seven, nine, and then when I do the uh, uh, minor, I just flat the three and the seven. If I want to do dominant, I flat the seven. So that's one, three, five, flat seven, nine, C, E, G, B flat, D. Uh, so uh, this is what we'd call parallel thinking. A lot of materials in jazz are better thought of parallel. 
uh, whereas other materials in jazz are better thought of relative. It just depends on which is the easiest. Uh, we know we've got plenty to do without thinking anything the hard way. We might as well take the easiest way that we can. <clears throat> so when I'm working with these scales with kids, the first thing I'm going to do is help them learn their major scales and get through all 12 keys around the cycle of dominance. And then I'm going to have them flat the seven. So let me, let me demonstrate this. I'm going to play the, uh, I won't go all the way around, but a little ways going around the major scale. And I would do this, by the way, in swing style. I'd swing the, the rhythms and I would tongue, uh, as in chapter nine, do, 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 do. Sorry, that, yeah, these are the scales. Do, 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 do. This is going to be going, I'm going to go to the ninth with everything. Ninth with the chord, ninth with the scale. So when I do that, I've got to tongue the top the contour uh, at the top of that scale, and it's going to be three notes in a row tongued over the top. So I want to practice this with the correct articulation and rhythm for a swing style while I'm doing it. So I'm going to do some major scales here around the circle. As soon as a student can do that, then we can easily flat the seven and have the dominance in all 12 keys. Again, around the circle, the cycle of dominance. Now I'm flat in the seven. This is parallel thinking. Uh, if I thought uh, relative, I'd have to think down a fifth. It's just too cumbersome. It takes too long. Uh, flat seven is really easy. So I'm going to teach these parallel. So I'll flat the seven. seven. <laughs> Etc. I'm going to do that all the way around in all the keys. Then I'm going to change it to, to minor. Now, as we mentioned before, the Dorian can be transposed, can be thought of as a second mode. It's related to the key down a whole step. There is your key signature. But I would just teach all of the simple scales here that we're doing uh, in a parallel way. So this is going to be flat three and flat seven. We already flatted the seven. So now flat three added to the flat seven. And that's going to sound like this. <laughs> You get the idea. <clears throat> so after, once I know all my majors, all my mixolydians, all my dorians, or my dominant and minor scales that I need for the 251, then I'm going to mix them. I'm going to go around the circle and mix minor, dominant, major, minor, dominant, major, minor, dominant, major, minor, dominant, major, all the way around the circle. That'll sound like this. Yes. <laughs> Another set. Another set. Another 
So your ears are probably telling you that we're doing the most common per chord progression in modern music, 2-5-1. By just going around the circle and mixing those qualities, I'm automatically getting 2-5-1, 2-5-1, 2-5-1, 2-5-1. So that only gave me four 2-5-1s to go around the circle once. So how do I get the other eight? Well, I slip my starting place. So I start now, instead of C being minor, I start with F being minor. <laughs> Another sound. And again, I'll get four more if I go the rest of the way, or the rest of the way around the circle. Uh, then I've got to slip one more time. Because now I only have eight done. So I've got to get the other four. So now B flat will be minor. And so on. If I go around the circle, then I'll get the, the rest of them. I'll have all 12. And look what a very useful format that is to practice my scales in. <clears throat> Now, of course, I could do the same thing with my chords. I could take the chords. I should be able to do this around the circle. My major chords. Etc. I should know those, and then I do them dominant. And then I'll do them all minor. So on. I'm going to have all those, uh, all those pure qualities in, uh, around the circle. Then I mix those up in the same way. So they're, they're now chord progressions, two, five, one. Minor, dominant, major. I did just chords in two five one formats. I've got four of them. Again, slip the starting place twice, and I've got all twelve. Three times around the circle to get all twelve major key. Two five ones. That's a great practice. I can go around the circle and combine the chords and the scales together. So I'm going to do the chords and quarter notes and the scales and eighth notes this way. So I'm going to do two fives, two five ones. So I'm going to go minor, dominant, major. around the circle once then I'm going to slip it again twice to get through that in all 12 keys so I can do just the scales I can do just the chords and I can do the chords and scales paired I can also do then the scales and chords in two five one order now we make a lot about uh, learning our scales in music education and to be sure we need to know our scales and we should definitely learn our scales but often we don't seem to emphasize learning our chords very much uh, you can tell that's important to me. <clears throat> if I had to choose between learning scales and chords, chords are far more useful 
than scales. I would take the chords every time. And so I actually have the students uh, do a chord study where they learn the chords. Uh, and, and ultimately I'm going to have eight chords in this study, but I usually start with three chords. Just the primary colors, minor, dominant, major. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn this way. Major, then minor, then dominant. Etc. And if I'm getting too high on the horn, I'll go down another octave. <clears throat> and I get those three basic colors of chords going in all 12 keys. This might take a little bit of doing, but uh, I've done this with junior high kids, had great success. You just have to teach a little at a time. Maybe you're only working on the first four keys, and then another four keys, another four keys, and put them all together and so on. But you You've got to you've got to get the kids learning chords. <clears throat> I um, I then have them sight read in their fake book. I like to have them a fake book. It, it can be either a physical fake book or it could be chord progressions on a phone app, such as the iReal B uh, phone app that has uh, lots of chord progressions. We need to read those chord progressions. I really like it if they can read those chord progressions with a play along. That isn't often the case, or it isn't always the case, but uh, I'm going to demonstrate it with a play-along so you can tell what I'm doing. I'm going to turn on a play-along for a chord progression, and then I'm going to play the chords in harmonic rhythm. In other words, uh, if I have a whole measure, I can go up and down. If I have only a half a measure, I can only go up. I could go up or down, but I'm, in this case, I'm just going to go up on the ones that are two counts. And I'm going to go through the whole, whole chord progression, running the chords in their harmonic rhythm with jazz articulation and rhythm. So let me turn on the music. So, <clears throat> I'd like to, to sight read two or three tunes a day at first. After a little while, maybe it's more like four or five or six tunes a day. Pretty soon they're very fast uh, and, and quite accurate at reading those chord progressions. It, it is uh, uh, not possible to have all the chords ready yet. We've only got those three primary colors. And so, if they see a minor seven flat five, I just tell them play it minor seven. If they see a dominant seven chord sharp nine, just play dominant seven. Just play the chords that they know. And uh, if they turn a page where there's a lot of chords that they don't know, just turn the page again. Make sure it's a, a worthwhile exercise uh, that's fitting what we're working on at the time. Anyway, I would have them uh, set reading chords early on. And I've had junior high students that were quite good at this. In fact, one of them uh, was able to achieve the second alto chair in the All-State Jazz Band in Utah as a ninth grader, which I don't think it had been done before, and I think this exercise helps her a lot. Uh, so it is possible to do these things even at younger levels, I think. Now, I'm going to expand that chord progression as my high school kids uh, get that down and they're more advanced, well, even some junior high kids, uh, particularly my college students, I'm going to expand that to have more qualities in it. So I'm going to go major, minor with a major 7, uh, minor 7, half diminished 7, fully diminished, augmented, and dominant. <laughs> Thank you. 
etc. Then take it all the way around the circle like that. <clears throat> now I can cover more of the chords that I'm sight reading in the fake book. And after a while, I'll even add an altered dominant chord on the end of that. That would sound like this. thinking about where I'm heading next here. Anyway, I would do that on all 12 keys. Now I've got all the materials I need for minor two fives, all of the materials I need for major two fives, and the diminished and augmented. I mean, it's, it's a win situation here. I, by practicing all these chords and then sight reading them in, in many configurations and orders in the juxtapositions in the fake book, fake book, I'm virtually practicing every tune. I'm getting where I can respond to uh, more tunes on the spot. So uh, I, I would, I, I make a big deal of the chord study and I'll tell you the students that really take me up on this uh, really start taking off and the students who I just can't light a fire under them to do this they just seem to never quite get going. I really think this chord study is huge. Uh, so that would be the beginning of getting some theory done with my students. Uh, starting with the simple chord study, gradually extending to the more difficult chord study, doing the scales in the similar formats, and then also uh, sight reading chords out of the fake book in harmonic rhythm. These all are super helpful for preparing your student to, to uh, be able to do the left brain part of the improvising. So that's probably enough for this segment, but we'll continue on with more soon.